In today's video review, we will be taking a look at the acrylic case for the UE2 X1 single board computer. This is the X86 window style SBC that I've did a couple of video reviews on a few months ago. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites and I decided to go ahead and get the acrylic case because it allows me to see the board for its uniqueness and what it is. Now keep in mind the board itself goes for $109.99 at an entry level price and the case itself retails for $6.99. You can find this directly on the UE2 uh, website or you can go to their Amazon store and order it. Now I decided to go with the acrylic case because it allows me to see the board and everything that it can do in all of its glory. However, they do offer a metal uh, encasing for it and I figured well if I went with that I wouldn't really be able to enjoy one of the main reasons why I decided to get this board. So today we will be covering the official install tutorial on how to get this fully set up. It didn't come with any instructions so I just kind of had to figure it out on my own and kind of mouse my way through it uh, in order to get this set up. So uh, setup is really easy and pretty simple, but you know, this thing is a beautiful SBC. And if you are looking for a comparison or something very similar to let's say a Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi or something very similar, then look no further. But keep in mind, this is x86. So a lot of Windows applications and everything that you do have will run natively on this. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we have the acrylic case. Came really quickly in the mail. It only took a couple of days from China. So it uh, has several pieces here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to edit this video in real time as much as possible without trying to have to cut from it. Uh, one of the things I like to do is give you guys a first overall hand and experience as to the difficulty that it takes to assemble a project. Uh, don't Sometimes I don't wanna make things to make it look like it's really easy or really difficult. So uh, I will try to explain as best as possible while demonstrating how to assemble this case. Now keep in mind, um, a lot of these parts that come over from China, they're not in the English native language. And uh, for this, it, it wasn't too difficult. Um, obviously I've assembled a lot of single board computer cases that are very similar. Uh, the, I think the pieces are well laid out in terms of where they should go, but I am kind of surprised that it didn't come with some type of instruction manual. But nevertheless, uh, the UE2 is very, unique in terms of where all the parts ought to be so obviously we know where our ethernet ports are we know where the fan is we obviously can set a, a test as to where the fan should be as well as some of the other gpio ports uh, the only other confusing part was trying to label some of the sides and whether they were going up or down if i had them in the right orientation but that was just about it so as you can see right now i'm just trying to get a placement or get a better understanding as to where some of these parts would go there is the top here. Uh, both sides of the acrylic pieces are double taped. So uh, there's no fingerprints, there's no scratches or anything, but uh, the packaging was well done on this. So we don't have any issues or concerns about that. As you can see there, there's one of the pieces. We have our USB ports as well as our ethernet. So that part was really easy to lay out. I think the only difficulty I had in assembling this piece was uh, in terms of the bottom. I wasn't exactly sure how to mount it to the bottom uh, with how all the pieces assembled, but once I kind of figured out where everything laid out, it was pretty much just a straightforward uh, process. All right, here we have some additional standoffs uh, that would separate the top from the bottom, and this that's where all of the pieces will assemble. So. As of right now, we're just kind of figuring out, laying out everything as to where they should go. We have our DC ports there with our HDMI connection. Uh, the only thing that was uh, probably also has a little difficulty kind of figuring out for a little bit was uh, where some of these pieces would go and just making sure they properly align before you put the top and the bottom on because uh, obviously uh, it, setting up the top and the bottom pieces uh, the top parts on this uh, acrylic case uh, you obviously have some diameter or some dimensions there that would have to set so far up above the fan and so far below uh, the unit itself
All right, here we are making some headway with the install procedure. So before we start removing all the tape and all the plastic uh, from the units, we're gonna get these lined up around the single board computer just so we have a better idea of where they're supposed to go. Now, everything is properly labeled as you can see, but uh, primarily this is what the unit will look like when we have everything fully assembled. So uh, I love to do this because I don't want my fingerprints and the oils on my skin all over the unit while I'm pre uh, trying to uh, assemble it.
All right, so as you can see, we are making some headway. But during this process, one of the things that crossed my mind was, how would I feed all of my accessories to? Now you can see that the MIPI cable is extending through the bottom and I entirely kind of forgot about that. Uh, one of the reasons why I love the UE2 X1 and having the ease of accessibility while it was open was easeability for me to access all of my accessories, whether it be the antenna, the M.2 SSD, uh, uh, drive that's at the bottom of the unit but uh, as you can see it really starts to give you a better perspective of what you're really dealing with here uh, because the MIPI connector has to feed through the unit so if you do have some additional connectors uh, on the opposite side of the case you will need to feed all of those things through uh, while you're working on the project now you also have to consider is this something that's going to be a permanent fix for you do you want to have your connect uh, connectors assembled while you are working on it and uh, do you want to have the ability to swap and remove pro uh, units so uh, that was just the only drawback about this uh, particular case was that if I do want to continue using this I would have to let leave everything as it is it's not going to be a very uh, easy to simple uh, simply uh, attach or detach accessories not that it's a big deal but if you're the kind of person that likes to swap out cables and connectors every now and then uh, that is something you do need to consider now uh, however on the gpio side uh, which is what i'm working on now that in is entirely open at all times so you don't typically have to worry about that. Uh, the only thing that I did have a concern about were the antennas here. So it doesn't feed through the top, I mean the bottom, it feeds through the top. So you have to kind of leave it up or uh, drape it over the uh, middle of the case there. Not a big problem, but just thought I'd let you know those were just some of the things that I did uh, need to consider. So again, the assembly process was pretty much straightforward after this, just wanted to make sure everything uh, fit really nicely. Uh, the only concern that I did have, well, I actually saved those reviews or those additional concerns towards the end, but we're making some headway here. Uh, everything is nicely in position, and once we get the top on here, everything will fit uh, nice and smoothly together. But as you can see here, there's the MIPI connector. I got to feed everything in before I uh, assemble it to the side, which is uh, a pretty simple task to do.
All right, and as you can see, we are pretty much completed with the project. Again, this is a very simple task. Is just, you know, if you have familiarity with assembling a single board computer and you've done with previous cases, uh, this is, again, a straightforward project. I wanted to leave up and record as much as possible uh, because I know a lot of people typically ask questions and I feel it would be a lot easier just to show the entire process. Uh, the only concern that I did have with this particular unit and with the, uh, with the acrylic case is that while you're using this unit and you have the top uh, covering the fan, although it does get airflow, it does get quite a bit noisy. In fact, I was doing some uploads over the past uh, few days and uh, typically this device always remains silent. In fact, uh, even when I do PlayStation 2, did some techno parrot as well as some other demanding uh, programs for this type of SBC. Uh, it runs really quiet. In fact, you don't hear it. However, when you leave the top on, uh, the fan uh, isn't really getting enough airflow, I want to say, but it does get a little bit louder. So uh, some of the things that I typically do is I just leave the top off uh, while I'm using this. But again, I have a nice uh, a unit here that I could fully see you know, at the unit, you know, that was pretty much what I was kind of going for is because I didn't want to put this in a box. I mean, this acrylic case looks really nicely, uh, really nice. And it allows me to see all of my accessories and peripherals with this unit. So um, I did make a recommendation to the company if they can design a top for the unit that doesn't cover the fan at all. So um, on the far right of the unit, maybe if they have an attachment that maybe just kind of covers up everything and uh, allows you to simply assemble this case without affecting maybe the airflow or covering it, then that'll be fine because then that way uh, the fan won't hum or holler or get a little bit louder uh, than it should be. But again, I love this case. I love the ability to see all of my accessories, all of their peripherals. That's why I wanted to go with it. And this is my favorite SBC. I mean, I love it as far as all of the things that it can offer. But, you know, again, some of the things that I would wish that it did have was a USB-C connection instead of the barrel type connection. But again, you have three HDMI outs. You have two HDMI outs. You have the HDMI, you have the USB-C, the MIPI connector, two HDMI, two uh, 3.0, uh, USB 3.0 jacks, as well as uh, USB uh, interfaces all the way around. Also, you have an analog and a digital microphone. Again, I have never seen that before on a single board computer. They work phenomenally well. I also finally got the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module adapter working too. I have a separate video install tutorial for that if you guys want to see it. I know in the original video I had some issues trying to get that piece installed, but after a while it was just a pretty much a piece of cake. I think I used some pliers uh, to snap on the antennas. But overall, let me know what your thoughts are below. I want Again, I know this video will be a little bit lengthy uh, for something that's really simple, but uh, I like to be detailed for all of my subscribers. So until next time, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have some more videos coming up here in the next few days regarding the UE2X1 as well as other single board computers. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.